Ah, uh, the old torque wrench problem. The problem is, how accurate is it? This is a click stop style. You uh, turn the screw here and it adjusts it. You read off the foot pounds on this side. And it's supposed to apply that amount of torque at the other end of the wrench, which could be over here. But how do you know it's doing the right value? Well, years ago, I built this little jig right here you can see as I'm zooming out. So I can put the torque wrench in here and measure the force on the scales. So mathematically if I know the length of the torque arm and the force and what I set it to over here I can kind of figure out what it is. So a lot of errors are involved. Uh, the accuracy of the scales, how much friction there's going to be in this thing. you know. But you'll get a clue. So the center of the torque arm is going to be here. This is where it's being driven. And the length involved, it's going to be up in this end region. So about 11 and an eighth. So I'm going to write down 11 and an eighth inches for the torque arm. So this particular torque wrench, which has no name on it that I can find, runs from about 10 foot-pounds up to an alleged 150. Starting at 10, I'm going to do every 5 foot-pounds up to 100, and then every 10 thereafter. Okay, so this is the setup I'm using. I've got the torque wrench in, and it's roughly horizontal. This, this bit doesn't matter too much. This bit I am going to try and keep horizontal, uh, which is why I drilled this at a certain height so it would suit the scales. I've got a little pad on here, just to help spread the load a little bit. These things have uh, sensors in the corners, to the spring balance thing is in the corners, so it helps spread the load a bit across the plate. And I do have to zero it to zero out the weight that's already on there, one way or the other. There we go. So I'll turn the barrel up another five pounds. I'm holding the, this down. going at 12 pounds, and I'll just continue doing this. 50, make sure everything stays the same. Okay, that's 47 on there. Oh, so as the torque level's going up, I'm finding I can't hold this pivot point down, so I've added cheesy old clamp on uh, just to see if I can hold it in place. Yeah, this one's going to be 85. So I'm still going to hold it down here. It's right on 80. Okay, as the final run indicated 150. I'm amazed this hasn't broken. It's starting to get pretty inaccurate at the top end. One forty-seven. One forty-seven. Right now, it's time to do some math. Right, there's the result data set, ready for conversion. So after putting the data into an Excel chart and figuring it all out. My torque wrench reads low, so now I have to calibrate it. How do you calibrate it? Well, luckily I found a website that tells me how, so I'm now I'm going to go out and see if I can actually do it. This is the business end of the torque wrench. There's a little screw on the side. That's not it. Red herring. Um, here's the sleeve. I've unscrewed it all the way off. This has lost its locking device a long time ago. I think that's where things may have gone wrong. Uh, there's a threaded sleeve here on the bottom that screws in and out of the thimble that has the divisions on it for the numbers and lines up with all this stuff. And that's going to push on this, which, if I can find it, yeah, there it is, pushes on that spring there. So if you can adjust the location of this compared to where the thimble markings are using that 
lock it with this lock nut in the correct position, all should be well. So I figured that I have to put it back on my rig setup, try and set it for 30 foot-pounds, and then make it actually click at 32 pounds on my scale. And then it should be calibrated at least at 30 pounds. And then it's not that linear, but it's pretty close. And in the end of the wrench, uh, I can get my snap ring pliers to fit in a couple of holes. So I may be able to get it set in position and then do the adjustment using these snap ring pliers and then lock it all in position. So I've got the torque wrench set at 30. And what I'm looking at over here is 32. Well, 32 and thirds, but hey, 32 is going to be close enough. So I'm going to give it a push down, see where it clicks. And it's below 30 right now. It's got to be 32. Okay, so I've got to turn it up a bit. All right, got the snap ring pliers in the holes. So I'm going to give it a quarter turn, and then I'll check to see what that does. I'll need both hands, though. So. So I gave it three three quarters of a turn. So let's see where it's going now. Well, it's really close to 32, isn't it? I don't think I'm going to get more accurate than that. Okay, so now it should be accurate. I'm going to do a few checks at different loads, and I should be good. I'm going to lock this off. So the torque wrench is now recalibrated. And I think it's going to look a lot better when I get it on the chart. These are the new numbers over the second column. I didn't do all of them, I just did a few, because it is pretty linear, especially when you're hitting the upper ones. And there we go, there is the completed chart. It's now a lot more accurate, except at the very low levels, where I never trust it anyway. Um, and I did it calibrated it at 30 because most sump plugs I work on are somewhere around 25-30 foot-pounds. So calibrating at that I should be pretty safe.